Tomachaya, and uh, thank you also to Sister Glenda for that prayer. I haven't seen her in a while, and I hope they're doing great there uh, with the husband back in Bethel College. Uh, thank you very much. Um, good morning, good morning, viewers. Um, this morning, let us delve into the word again. We are in the book of Mark, chapter 4, verses 35. Let me read it in your hearing once more. On that day when evening had come, he said to them, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was, and the other boats were with him. And a great windstorm arose and the waves were breaking into the boat so that the boat was already filling. But he was in the stand asleep on a cushion. And they woke him and said to him, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he awoke and rebuked the winds and the seed and, and said to the sea, peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was great calm. He said to them, why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, who then is this that even the wind and the sea, they obey him. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word and may it be so until he comes, amen. Uh, this morning, we are going to focus on verse 37. And a great windstorm arose and the waves were breaking into the boat so that the boat was already filling. A great windstorm arose and the waves were breaking onto the boat so that the boat was starting to fill. That is how it is put here in uh, this uh, standard version that I'm reading from. I know when you look at the book of Mark, of the book of Matthew, chapter eight, it says there that the waves had engulfed them. Um, I remember when I was doing Greek at school, um, that my Greek lecturer said that this engulfing was creating a situation that looked as though there was an umbrella of a wave that was over them where they were completely covered, which is the Matthew account of what was going on during that period when these waves were beating against the boat. Now, there is a sense that there is a continuous beating on the boat that is coming from the waves themselves. And it keeps on consistently doing the same thing in the boat so that fear can come to those that are inside the boat so that they can feel disillusioned, so that they can lose the purpose of their mission. And I'd like to say this morning that if you have co-joined yourself to Jesus. If you have held his hand so that you can cross over to the other side with him. One of the expectations that you need to look forward to into your life is that the winds and the waves are going to come knocking at your boat. There are going to be storms that are going to come out of nowhere that you know nothing about that are going to come knocking at your life. And I'd like to say with that, that the life of being a Christian, the life of following Jesus, the life of being called by his name is also a life that is co-joined to his war, a life that is co-joined to the drama that the devil brings so that he can fight. But I'd like to say that his fight is very small. His fight is minimal. His fight is ignorable because at the end of the day, it wasn't enough to waken Christ that was in the stand of the sheep. Brothers and sisters, when we look at the book of Revelation chapter 12, it says that the devil or 
the dragon, as they put it there, uh, became furious with the woman and went off to make war on the rest of her offspring, meaning that the war that Jesus has with the devil was transferred as well to everyone that was birthed or that is in this partnership with him of crossing over to the other side. The book of first Peter says that brethren, this is the warning that Peter is bringing. Be vigilant, be sober minded for the devil is prowling around like a rolling lion looking for whom he may devour. Meaning that when you are in this life of Christianity, when you are in this life of crossing over, the only expectation you can have is that it is not going to be all sales. It is not going to be all peaceful, but there will be storms that will come knocking at your boat. This was the very same situation with the disciples of Jesus as they were trying to cross over to the other side, that a great storm arises. Mark does not say just a little storm, but he says a great storm. And I'd like to say to you this morning that yes, a great storm will come. Yes, expect the storm to come into your life. But one thing that I know, there is another that is with us in this boat that makes the heart to be calm at the presence of the storm. Even though the winds can beat on the boat, even though the water can start filling the boat, yet the presence of the other that is more powerful, that is the creator of the storms, of the waves, of the waters, that brings comfort to know that even those can be sorted out. Brothers and sisters, as we come through this morning, I am reminded of one that also was, had his own share of suffering as he was crossing over to the other side. And this is the man, David. David says that though I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. David draws his strength for going through the storm to the presence of Jesus that is with him. He doesn't talk about what he does whilst he is with him, but he says that he feels strengthened to go through the valley of the shadow of death because Jesus is next to him. And I'd like to say that even in this boat, Jesus is next to them and they are going through the storm. The boat is starting to fill up. But one thing that is important in the view of David towards these pressures that are coming through because of the relationship with Jesus, he is saying death has only become a shadow. It is no longer death when I am with Jesus. How do you say that, David? David says that because he knows that when he goes through this valley of death because of the presence of the shepherd, the presence of the one that is called the light, who is Jesus himself, then it means that Jesus suspends the death so that it does not become death as was supposed to be experienced but it only becomes the illumination of death, which is but a shadow. So David is not saying there is going to be absence of death, but he says that what we will experience is not perishing, but it is a shadow of what we were supposed to go through. Therefore, David accrues this change of death from being this destroyer to being just a mere shadow towards the presence of the one that is alive. And I'd like to say that there is no shadow without the presence of the light. Brothers and sisters, there's only one way 
that you can experience the shadow. And that is through the illumination of the light rays through a certain object that is translucent so that those can be displayed on the other side. And I'd like to say that David says that death has only become a shadow. Even in the days that we're going through, when people are dying in unprecedented numbers, when we see people dying of COVID, of a whole lot of things that we never even knew their names before, David is saying that when you are in partnership, when the Lord is present with you, even that death, instead of being viewed as you perishing, we view it as you being asleep in the arms of Jesus because death is no longer what it was supposed to be. For the one that is the light, which is Jesus himself, suspends it so that it doesn't become what it was supposed to be. Therefore, when it illuminates in our lives, we see what could have been, but we do not experience what we were supposed to experience. Brothers and sisters, the boat was starting to fill up other versions, the King James Version says that the boat was full. Matthew says they were engulfed by the waves. But end of the day, we do not see anywhere where they say that somebody's life was lost in the sea. We do not see anywhere where it says that somebody got hurt. But what we do see is that even though the boat was starting to fill up, Yet, it did not sink the boat. The boat was starting to fill up. Others say the boat was full, but the boat was not sunken. When they go to Jesus to wake him up, they are still in the boat. What they were perceiving was what could become if this condition continues, and isn't that the reason for our heartache most of the time? Because we are not hurt by the current situation that is happening, but we are mostly hurt by what we perceive of what is going to happen in the situation. And that is the part that causes us the panic and the turmoil. But I'd like to say to you, let the boat fill up this morning because there is another that will make sure that it does not go down. It will almost go down, but it will not go down. I'd like the fact that God says, I will not give you more than you can handle. How many times have you seen situations happen in your life and you say, I almost had a breakdown. I almost lost my life. I almost lost my job. I almost got into a divorce. But had it not been for God, things could have become much worse. And this morning, I'd like to say to you, if you still have breath inside of you so that you can go to the master, then you know that your situation has not sunk in you. Let the water fill up, but it will almost look as though it's going down. But at the end of the day, the miracle is that in the presence of Jesus, the boat cannot sink. The disciples, as they were present inside that boat, they knew that the boat was filling up. They could see that danger was around the corner. That is what caused them the panic. But nowhere did the boat sink. Therefore, I love the fact that Mark says that the boat was almost full. Brothers and sisters, even in our lives, the things that affect us, they bring us to a realization that things are going out of line and things could become much worse. But we are almost, we are always at the brink of almost. And the reason why we do that or the reason why we experience that is because there's a significant other that is in the boat that causes a miracle for the boat not to sink. Yes! The water is filling up, but 
it is not sinking the boat. You know, when the three Hebrew boys were taken and thrown into the raging fire, they were almost in a position where they were supposed to feel the fire because even the shackles that were on them, they burnt off for they walked out of the fire without the shackles that had bound them. And I'd like to say that the presence of Jesus inside of the fire was a reality for them that showed them how the fire and its fierceness can be suspended by the presence of the other. And I'd like to say that the fire was real. Everything was real. The shackles would not have burnt off from their hand if the fire was not real. But allow me to say that it was an illumination of what could have been, for they saw the strength of the fire, but it did not burn them because of the presence of Jesus inside the fire. And I'd like to say this morning that yes, you are going through a storm. Yes, things are looking terrible. The waves are starting to knock at your boat. Your boat look as though it's gonna sink. But if you look at it carefully, it is not happening the way that it was supposed to. It's almost sinking, but it has not sunk yet. Therefore, it's reason enough to experience the miracle. If you can only stop being afraid and look around, you will see that God has already been moved. Brothers and sisters, we do not serve a God that is moved when we pray because by the time we offer our prayers, it is already too late, but God moves and he positions himself in our fire. He positions himself in our storm so that when we cry out saying, Jesus, come and save us, he saves I'm already there. There's an illustration that is used by most preachers where they come through and they say that in that fiery furnace, God was panicking in heaven, saying, who can go and rescue the three Hebrew boys? And the cherubims and the six-winged angels were all saying, Lord, we are available. It will only take us a split second. But God said it is too late. But it was only Jesus that answered the call and said to God, I am already in the fire. Therefore, I qualify to save them on time. Brothers and sisters, when the boat is filling up, when things are happening in our life, it is not a time for panic, but it is a time for worship. That is the time when you are supposed to call Jesus for who he is, to call Jesus for what he has been in your life in the past times, to remind yourself over who it is that holds your hand who it is that is in partnership with you, who it is that is crossing over to the other side with you. I say to you this morning, you almost had a breakdown, but you didn't. You almost found yourself in a depressed situation, but you didn't. You almost lost your kids, but you haven't. Because at the end of the day, in the presence of the one that is significant, the one that is powerful, we will almost but we will never get there. Even death itself, death will come. Death will, death will come our way, but it is not perishing, but it will, it will only be a rest for us that are in this boat with him. The Bible says, no weapon, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Meaning that there will be weapons formed against you in this journey of life, but they will never have their intended end realized if Jesus is the significant other that is present in your life. And I'm saying to you, allow them 
to formulate those weapons. Allow them to do what they do. Instead, what you're supposed to do is not to panic, but to worship God and to say, you told me these things will happen. The book of John chapter 16, 33 says, I tell you these things so that in me you might have peace. In this world, you shall suffer tribulation. In this world, you shall go through turmoil and difficulties. In this world, you will see terrible things happening in your life. But then Jesus says something strange. He says, be of good cheer, smile, take strength, take courage, for I have already overcome the world. Meaning that by the time you go through your situation, it first goes through Jesus. He handles it. He tries it. He takes away the sting of it so that by the time it's passed on to you, it is but a shadow and an illumination of what could have been. Therefore, when you experience heartache, oh, you can imagine how much worse your situation could have been Go to God in worship and say, God, it could have been much worse, but because I have you in my boat, I know that it's, this is but a shadow of what would have become. Your suffering, what you think today is too much for you, actually it could have been much worse had God not been there so that he can wrestle with it first, take away its sting, and give it to you in a form that is not harmful to you. Brothers and sisters, I'm reminded of a story of a family that was driving around the beehive. And as soon as they were driving around that place, a bee managed to sneak into the car. The father driving the car at very high speeds, he could not help the family because the wife was panicking. The children were panicking and all he could do because of the buzzing bee that was floating around in the car, he reached out his hand so that the bee can get the attention of his hand. And the bee came and did what it was supposed to do and stung him in his hand. But then the bee continued to buzz around in the car. Now the perception of those in the car was that danger was still around. The perception of those in the car was that there was still imminent danger that was coming. But at the end of the day, the father shows them his hand and he says that I have taken away the sting of the bee. There is no need for you to panic for the bee will not harm you. Yes, it is still buzzing in the car, but it will not harm you. Brothers and sisters, that is what God does for our situation. He looks around for the part that would kill us. He looks around for the part that would break us. And we almost get to the part where we feel as though we've had enough, but then new mercies are showed because we are able to go through and see ourselves on the other side. Christ has taken away the sting of all of the things that could harm us. And I'd like to say the only thing that we experience now is the illumination of what could have been. And as I'm coming to a close this morning, I want to say that suffering is one of the characteristics of those that are crossing over to the other side. The Bible says that when those gates are open in heaven and we start walking in, I know I'm not going to be in the 144,000. Oh, but I know that great multitude, I'm going to make it in there. The Bible says there'll be a question that asks, who are these? that are walking through those gates. I know Mabenga is gonna be in the front line. And when they ask who are these, the answer is gonna be one. These are they that have gone through great suffering, but have washed their robes clean in the blood of the lamb. Therefore the suffering that we're going through right now, it is still gonna be taken away at some point. And it is just gonna remain as a witness of what could have been that we did not go through because of the Jesus that is present with us. I'd like to pray with somebody this morning and say that maybe your boat is starting to fill up. Maybe things are starting to get bad. Maybe you feel as though this is the time when he's supposed to answer. Maybe you feel as though this is the time when he's supposed to come through for you. But I'd like to say, if only you could waste your energies on seeing the fact that the boat is not sinking, 
then you will start to realize that God is already inside your situation. Those children that are going wayward, yes, they may look like they're bad, but God still has a plan for them because there's a song that says that the pipe I used to smoke, I smoke it no more. Its existence is far formulated on the fact that there was a time when it looked as though I could not leave the pipe, but now I'm in a position where I can leave it. Give worship to God when the waves start hitting at your boat, because he has the power of taking care and suspending the attacks of the devil. Let us pray. Heavenly Father out there, thank you, Lord, for everything that you do for us. Thank you, Father, for giving us hope. We rejoice, Lord, even in our infirmities. We rejoice, Father, even in our discomfort. For your Bible, Lord, says that our discomfort and our suffering, it causes us to have endurance. And endurance builds character in us. And character builds uh, 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 hope inside of us. And because of that, Lord, we rejoice even in the sufferings that we're going through. Our prayer this morning, don't stop, Lord, the waters from filling up our boats. Otherwise, Lord, what we are praying for is that we can have our eyes opened so that we can see the miracle of you already suspending what could have been. Because even though the water is filling up, yet the boat is not sinking. Bless us, Lord, this morning and forgive us our sins and help us, Lord, to appreciate you and worship you at all times. Because you're great, Father, there is no other place where we can go and hide except for in you. Even this morning, Lord, in our sufferings, bless us, Lord, so that we can say, devil, no matter what it is that you can bring, but you're forgetting that I have a significant other who is Jesus that will make sure my things do not go bad. This we ask for, Father, in your wonderful name. Amen. Amen.